Hey friends, good to see you again. If this is your first time visiting the channel, welcome. My name is Marcello. In this video, I'll be doing a Focal close back headphone shootout. This video was made possible with the support of iFi Audio, a branch of Abington Music Research, the developer and manufacturer of ultra high end audio technologies. iFi Audio brings AMR technologies to audio enthusiasts by focusing on your listening preferences, allowing you to tailor the sound to your needs. Check out the new signature series from iFi Audio today. Many of you are very familiar with Focal headphones for their beautiful designs and dynamic Focal house sound. I was able to review the Focal Utopia last year as well as the Focal Clear OG. This year I wanted to round out reviewing the rest of Focal's current lineup with a Focal Stelia flagship closeback headphone, the newest release Focal Celesti, and the Focal for Bentley Radiance. I also have a pair of Focal Clear MG that I did an early impressions live stream on and will be dropping a proper review for them so don't forget to subscribe today and hit the bell icon turning on all notifications. For this headphone shootout, I will be utilizing several headphone amps and digital analog converters to draw my conclusions about the sound of these three headphones. I will also discuss my audio chain throughout the review and list the gear used in the video description for you to check out. As with all my audio reviews, I will also provide the music playlist I use to evaluate the headphones so you can listen along. I'm not being compensated for this review and all thoughts and impressions are my own. The review will cover a few important areas including build quality and comfort, quality of sound, which includes bass, mids, treble, tonality, detail and dynamics, imaging and soundstage, and lastly audio chain synergy. Then stick around to the end and I will give you my overall conclusions. So let's jump right in. First off, I want to thank Taryn from Headphones.com for sending me out the Focal Radiance and Focal Celesti so I could make this shootout happen. The support of great companies and individuals sending me products to review is a massive help to continue bringing you guys new content. So let's talk build quality, specs, comfort, and design. I will start out by saying all three of these headphones have excellent build quality, comfort, and aesthetically pleasing designs. Let's dive a bit deeper into each headphone and how they compare. The Focal Stelia is the flagship of the current closed back headphones. The Stelia uses, according to Focal, only the best material with full grain leather for the headband, cups, and pads. The leather, if well cared for, should age beautifully with a one of a kind look. The Stelia uses a 40 mm full range speaker driver with their M-shaped pure beryllium dome and frameless voice coil, resulting in what Focal says reproduces the tiniest details dynamics and presents an uncompromising tonal balance. The Stelia's looks may be loved by some and hated by others. I'm in the love camp and enjoy the cognac, mocha, and copper colors throughout the build of these headphones. Like the other two headphones we will talk about during the shootout, the Stelly is 35 ohms and has a sensitivity of 106 dB SPL per milliwatt, which makes them a breeze to drive from even a portable DAC amp such as uh, AudioQuest Dragonfly, iFi XDSD, or a Fio BTR5. The Stelly will of course scale up some in performance with higher performing amplification and digital analog converters. The Stelly has a frequency response of 5 Hz to 40 kHz and includes one very short OOC cable with 3.5 mm and a quarter inch adapter and also a 10 foot OFC cable with 4 pin XLR. Lastly the Stelia includes a terrific carrying case like the other two headphones. Looking next at the Celesti, you will find many of the same aesthetic design choices found on the Stelia. The Celesti trades out the mocha, copper, and cognac finishes for navy blue aluminum yokes, navy blue stainless steel grills, and a rose gold finish around the Focal logo. The semi-aniline leather used on the Celesti cups, headband, and ear pads are dyed and should not age in the same way as the Stelia's leather according to Focal, which could be a plus if they will be used for traveling or in the office. The Celesti uses a 40 millimeter aluminum magnesium dome full range driver and has an impedance of 35 ohms and a sensitivity of 105 dB SPL per one milliwatt with a frequency response of 5 Hz to 23 kilohertz. Again, these headphones are extremely simple to drive and include, again, a very short OFC cable with a 3.5 millimeter and quarter inch adapter, along with an excellent carrying case. Lastly, we have the Focal Radiance under license of Bentley Motors. This headphone is a departure in the looks and feel department from the previous two headphones we looked at. The Radiance uses 
a full grain leather headband, full grain leather ear pads and cups with black solid aluminum yokes, black diamond motif, reflective grills, and a copper finish on the Bentley logo as well as the Focal logo. One other thing to note is the Radiance uses a slightly different rear side porting design versus the porting through the logo on the Stellia and the Celesti. The Radiance again uses a 40 millimeter M-shaped aluminum magnesium dome four range driver with a 35 ohm impedance, 105 SPL per one milliwatt, and a frequency response of five hertz to 23 kilohertz. Like the other two headphones, the Radiance uses 3.5 millimeter unbalanced TRS jack connectors on the cups, which is great as one of the first things I recommend doing for all three of these headphones is replacing the cable was something that is a bit longer. I was sent out a set of Heart Audio cables for review with their brilliant adapter system to use with multiple connectors. I found these to be great cables for not a huge amount of money. Thanks again to Heart Audio for sending them out for me to use. Of course, there are a ton of options in the custom cable space and you will have lots of choices. I do think most users are going to find the included stock cable with a 3.5 millimeter and quarter inch adapter to be way too short. All three of these headphones are packaged beautifully from the manufacturer, with the Stellia and the Radiance coming in leather clad packaging that feels like pure luxury during the unboxing experience. Focal headphones tend to have some of the better unboxing experiences compared to many headphones I have demoed so far. As far as comfort goes, I found all three headphones to be comfortable with a couple of nitpicks. The Radiance and the Stellia weigh about 435 grams and the Celesti weighs in at 430 grams. For the shape of my head and the overall clamp force of these headphones, I found the Stellia to be excellent for my comfort preferences. I found the Celesti to have the tightest, least comfortable clamp force followed by the Radiance, followed by the Stellia. One other thing I noticed with the Radiance when listening, if I was to lean back in my listening chair, I could feel the metal material that protects the driver push against my ears a bit. This isn't a deal breaker when talking about the Radiance, but something potential buyers should be aware of. Again, for my personal preferences, the Stellia struck the balance between the right amount of clamp force, weight, and sound isolation to make them the most comfortable of the three. Speaking of sound isolation, the Focal Celesti seemed to have the best isolation of the three headphones, followed next by the Radiance, and lastly by the Stellia. Your mileage may vary depending on the size, shape of your head and ears. For the sake of time, I will link to the rest of the tech specs, design philosophies in the video description below. I hope you're enjoying this shootout so far. If you are, do me a favor and smash the like button for me and consider subscribing today if you haven't already. Let's get into my favorite part of the review, the quality of sound. One thing to note is that Focal recommends a burn-in period for the Celesti, Radiance, and the Stellia to operate at their best. Focal states that they will naturally reach optimal performance after several hours of listening, but if a user wanted to speed up that process, they recommend bassy music run through them for at least 24 hours, helping to stabilize the speaker drivers, allowing the listener to get the best sound from them. With that out of the way, let's first start talking about the bass and how the three headphones compare. For my sound impressions, I primarily listen to the Matrix Audio Element M as a standalone amplifier DAC, as well as the Element M paired with the Burson 3x Performance Headphone Amplifier, the Matrix Audio Mini i Pro 3 as a standalone amplifier and DAC, as well as paired with the i5 Pro iCan Headphone Amplifier, the Shit Jotunheim 2 with both its internal multi-bit DAC, as well as I paired that with the Matrix Element M as a DAC, for portable amp DACs, I primarily use the iFi XDSD, the iFi IDSD Micro Black Label, the FIO BTR5, and the AudioQuest Dragonfly Red. Starting with the bass, a few fun test tracks in addition to my standard playlist I use to get a feel for the bass presentation of these three headphones were Synthesizer and Take Your Time off the All Blessed Faithless album, Right Here, Right Now from Fatboy Slim, Smack My <laughs> Up from The Prodigy, The Fat of the Land record, Eat Sleep, Rave Repeat featuring Beardy Man, Angel from Massive Attack, Space Bass from Carl Cox with DJ Onions, and Bass Nectar, Music is a Drug off his Unlimited album. The Stelia doesn't present a nightclub style quality of bass, just tight, defined, and well extended for most of the music I listen to. The Stelia, in my opinion, has the better bass presentation when comparing to the less defined bass presentation of the Celesti. The Stelia really shows off some of these qualities when listening to Eat Sleep Rave Repeat at about the 130 mark. You will hear what I mean. Listening to rock music with bass guitars, acoustic guitars, kick drums, and male vocals, again, the Stelia sounds better to me. 
even if the radiance tends to present more in the quantity of the base regions, the Stellia has the more accurate sound in my opinion. I also found this to be true listening to orchestral compositions with cellos, organs, drums, and other instruments that fall into the bass regions. The Celesti has good extension into the bass regions with a bit less detail and texture to the bass than the Stellia. The Celesti is a huge improvement in the bass department over the Focal Allegia, as that headphone I felt was very bass shy. The Celesti has a very good bass presentation that seems to play well with classical, orchestral, and jazz music. The Radiance takes the bass up a notch both in the sub and mid bass band and really delivers the most bass of any Focal headphone I have heard at the time of this video. The Radiance is the Focal option in my opinion for a bass lover, especially with electronic music, pop, rock, and other genres where a bit more bass elevation might be preferred depending on your listening preferences. Again, it doesn't sound as tight and detailed as the Stellia's bass, but it is massively enjoyable, especially with electronic music and pop. The Radiance may be a bit much in the bass department for more traditional audiophile music, however. Some listeners may find bringing the bass down a bit using EQ or tone control will better fit their listening preferences. For me, the Stellia is still the best all-around performer for bass of the three headphones, even though the quantity of bass is greater from the Radiance. Moving on to the mid-range of these three headphones, starting with the Stellia. The mid-range on the Stellia sounds very well executed from the lower mid-range region to the upper mid-range. Again, I feel as if the Stellia has the best overall performance in the mid-range for cellos, strings, vocals, and piano keys. Some artists I listened to to draw my conclusions were Josh Bell, Yo-Yo Ma, Yellow Jackets, Fleetwood Mac, The Grateful Dead, London Symphony Orchestra, Elton John, and many other mixes of vocals, pianos, and strings. A few of my favorite tracks for this review were Your Song from Elton John, The Grateful Dead, Friend of the Devil, and First Episode at Heighton Again from Elton John. The Celesti sounds a bit more forward in the mid-range than the Stellia, which I think some jazz, classical, and orchestral music listeners will most likely appreciate. For my personal listening taste, it could have been a bit less energetic as it tended to draw my attention away from the vocals, giving more attention to the strings on most tracks, which caused vocals to sound a bit more artificial tonally in the mid-range when comparing to the Stellia. However, again, I can see how jazz and classical lovers could prefer this tuning. The Radiance has the warmest sounding mid-range, especially across the lower mid-range. The central mid-range sounds closer to the Celesti, maybe a touch warmer, and the upper mid-range and lower treble region sound a bit more relaxed than the Celesti. The Stelia again outperforms the Radiance in the mid-range with a very special presentation of vocals, strings, and piano tones, sounding the most tonally accurate along with other instruments that fall throughout this band. This is really gonna come down to what you value most in the mid-range and the type of music you listen to. In most cases, I prefer strings, vocals, piano tones to sound rich with a touch of warmth without sounding overdone. For my preferences on most tracks, this is what the Stellia provides. My second favorite headphone for the mid-range would be the Radiance with most of the music I listen to. Next, looking at the treble of these headphones, the Stellia has the most energy to my ears in the presence region of the treble, allowing images to sound so well defined, something I first got a taste of when I reviewed the Focal Utopia. The Celesti and Radiant sound close to me in this region, with the Celesti having a bit more energy in the lower treble region compared to the Radiant's all three headphones sound very well defined, like all Focal headphones I have heard, with the Stellia sounding the most defined of the three. In the brilliance region of the treble, the Stellia tends to have the most air and sparkle, giving it a bit more open sound in my opinion. It also sounds the smoothest to my ears, where the Radiance seems to sound a bit more elevated to possibly compensate for the larger bass shelf. The Celesti also sounds a bit more elevated in the upper treble region, sounding a bit less smooth to my ears than the Stellia. Overall, synthesizers, cymbals, snare drums, and horns still sounded the best to my ears from the Stellia. As always, this will come down to your personal preferences and what you value most in sound. As far as tonality goes of the three headphones, if you haven't guessed it by now, I prefer the tonality of the Stellia over the other two headphones and feel it just plays the best with all genres of music. Whereas the Radiant sounds excellent with pop, rock, and electronic, but could sound a bit thick in the lower end for other genres of music. However, I still prefer the warmer tonality of the Radiance with its richer sound than that of the more neutral energetic sound of the Celesti. 
If a listener primarily listens to jazz, classical, and orchestral music, then I would probably encourage them to listen to the Stelia and the Celesti. If a listener mostly prefers pop, rock, and electronic music, then I would encourage them to check out the Radiance and the Stelia. For the best overall performance for my preferences, hands down, the Stelia wins. All three headphones have very good imaging, with the Stelia having the best imaging, followed by the Celesti and the Radiance. The Stelia has better separation of those images compared to the other two headphones, again followed by the Celesti and the Radiance. As far as soundstage size, none of these headphones, or any Focal headphones for that matter, have a very large soundstage. All three stages are precise, but I would consider them all to be intimate sounding with the Stelia and the Radiance having the best sound stage size, in my opinion. Along with several Yossi Harakawa tracks like Bubbles and Wandering to test the imaging and sound stages of these three headphones, I also found a few other tracks good for evaluating sound stage, such as Hunter from Bjork, Michael Jackson's Thriller, Dreams from Fleetwood Mac, Dogs from Pink Floyd, Money for Nothing from Dire Straits, Number Two, and lastly, all melody from Nils Fram off his latest record, Tripping with Nils Fram. One other point about the sound stage of the Stelia. It tended to sound a little bit larger and more spacious when wearing glasses and getting a small break in the seal of the pads. So that is something fellow Stelia owners may wanna try out. You may find that you like it. Lastly, let's discuss detail and dynamics before we get into my favorite audio chains with these headphones. As you may have guessed, <laughs> by now, the Stelia has the best detail presentation, allowing me to see and hear the deepest into recordings. The Celesti seemed to slightly edge out the Radiance as far as detail reproduction, allowing me to pick up a bit more information on tracks I listen to. As far as dynamics go, I would say the Stelia again leads the pack with the tightest, punchiest, most impactful sound, followed next by the Radiance and Celesti, both sounding dynamic with very good punch and slam. My favorite audio chains with the Focal closed back headphones were the built-in amps of the Matrix Element X, Element M, Mini i Pro 3, as Focal headphones are easy to drive, and the very resolving DACs of these all-in-one amp DAC streamers, paired with the slightly warmer, smoother solid state headphone amps, have a very good synergy with all three Focal headphones. I got lost for hours listening to Nils Fram's Rune Artist playlist with the Matrix Element M and the Mini i Pro 3, along with the flagship Stelia headphones. Nils' masterful performances, along with the tonality, detail, and excellent resolution of the Stelia were extremely addictive to listen to. Other tracks I really enjoyed were Says, Sweet Little Lie, Shimmer, Tristana, Sunson, and Our Own Roof. I also enjoyed the ZMF Pendant with the Radiance and Stelia, and the iPi Pro iCan paired with all three. The Burst and Soloist three times performance and the Jotunheim 2 sounded the best with the Radiance and the Stelia. For all these headphones, I think they can benefit from a bit of tube love or smoother sounding solid state amps to help synergize their very exciting sound signatures. Overall, my favorite tube hybrid amp I listened to with the three headphones was the iFi Pro iCan, and my favorite solid state amps were the Matrix Element X, M, and Mini i Pro 3, and the Burson Soloist three times performance. Since all three of these headphones are so easy to drive, I also ran them off of the Dragonfly Red, which was my least favorite of the three small DAC amps, the Fio BTR5, which was a step in the right direction, sounding very good and more balanced overall. The iFi XDSD and IDSD Micro Black Label were two of my favorite portable options for these headphones. The iFi XDSD is an ideal portable unit as it has X-Base correction and 3D plus stage enhancement and is small enough to fit inside any of the portable travel cases included with the headphones. All three of these headphones could likely pair very well with a DAP if you already have one or are looking to purchase one. In conclusion, all three of these headphones have excellent build quality and very good comfort. The sound of all three is very engaging, with the Stelia being my overall top choice for my personal preferences and types of music I listen to. I hope this headphone shootout was helpful and makes choosing between these three headphones a bit easier for you. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing today and clicking the bell icon to turn on all notifications so you know when my next video or live stream is scheduled. If you would like to connect with me and see live impressions, the music I'm listening to, and gear that I'm reviewing before everyone else, please consider showing your support and visit my website mrhifireviews.com and become a supporter by clicking on the Patreon page. 
I will leave a link in the video description to my Patreon and all other products discussed during this review. Big shout out to Flashbolt, Paisley Underground, Snow Ranger, Jason, and The Professor for their continued Patreon support, helping to make videos like this possible. Thanks again, friends, for watching. Until next time, stay safe, stay happy, and much love.